Hello, computer science students. So today's project will be adding extensions to our previous Space Monkey mini game that we started yesterday. So please make sure that you are completely done with that project before you move on to this one. Today we will be working on something called spawning. Spawning is a term that games normally use to talk about creating new characters. And today you will be adding an extension to this game by creating your very own character. I will be walking you through an example of how to do one, but you are more than welcome to choose your own character and what role it serves in this game. The character that we are going to be adding in is a life booster. So right now your monkey has a way of losing lives, but it doesn't have a way of earning lives back. So I'm going to be adding in a new sprite that's a little heart, and if this little heart ever appears, then the monkey can try to grab the heart so that we can earn lives back. I am going to be selecting a sprite from scratch. If you would like to upload a character from a picture from your computer or from Google, then I will include a link in the description below about how to upload a picture from Google. Let's get started. I'm going to select a heart sprite. There we go. I want the sprite to be smaller, so I'm going to head over to costumes. Control A, and I'm going to drag these blue dots to make it a smaller sprite. Alright, now let's make our way over to the code. The first step for a new sprite in this game is that I need to set up the sprite. And something that we need to do at the beginning of a game is we need to tell a sprite where it should be. Now every single one of these characters should be at the very beginning, at the very top of this game. I'm going to place it up here and then I'm going to look at its Y value because the Y value tells us how far up or how far down it is in the screen. And right now the Y is telling me that it's at Y equals 180. I'm going to grab a go to X Y block so that every time the green flag is clicked the heart knows to start all the way back up here. Now we always want this Y to equal 180 so that the heart starts at the very top of the screen, but we want this heart to randomly appear left and right on the screen. So in order to do that, we're going to use a block called random. Go ahead to the operators blocks, click on this pick random block, and we want it to go anywhere in between this point and this point. So I know that that is around negative 220 to positive 220. So now when I press the green flag, this heart is going to show up always at the very top of the screen, but as far as the X goes, it's just picking a random position between this point and this point. Okay. Now I don't actually want my heart showing up at the very beginning of the game. So I'm going to go to looks and scroll down a bit until I see this hide block. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to place it right below the when green flag is clicked. So now when I press the green flag, the heart stays hidden for now. The last thing I want to do here is I want to create copies of the heart. Find the forever block. So throughout the game, we're always going to be randomly making copies of the heart sprite. To do that, we're going to use this wait block and ask the game to randomly wait between 5 and 10 seconds before we make a clone of the heart sprite. So notice that in control, I scroll down and I grab this block that says create clone of myself. This is the block that is making the copies of the heart sprite. This is all of the code for section 1. So again, section one is setting up the heart sprite, hiding it, and randomly creating clones of the heart sprite throughout the game. All right, let's move on to section two. For section two of the code, we want to grab this block right here that says, when I start as a clone. Section two is where we're going to control how each copy of the heart sprite falls down. When we create a copy of the heart sprite, we want that copy to show up. So if you go back to looks, 
Now is when we can grab the show block. Let's go to motion and grab a glide blank seconds to X and Y. And here is where we can control how fast the heart is falling and to where. So this seconds category controls how fast it's going. Let's go back to operators and grab another pick random. This time I'm going to say pick random 1 through 5. So that's saying pick a random speed 1 through 5. As far as X goes, we never want to change our X value because our heart is not moving left to right at all. It's only moving down. So if you go to motion and scroll down, you'll see an X position block. Please drag that in and drop it in the blank for X right there. So now it's saying glide a random speed to the same X position. Don't change that. But the Y is what changes, and we need to figure out what is the Y at the very bottom of the screen. This tells me that the Y at the bottom of the screen is about negative 175. So let's type that in right there. Right. And when our heart does reach the bottom of the screen, we can go ahead and delete it. So if you go back to control and scroll down, you'll see this final cloning block that says delete this clone. Go ahead and drag it in. If it reaches the bottom of the screen, that means that it didn't hit the monkey and we don't need it anymore. That's it for our second section of code. And now for our final section of code, this third section of code is what updates the lives variable if our heart copy did touch the monkey. So let's grab another when I start as a clone block. We're going to need a forever block so that we can always check if. In this if then block we want to drop in if touching the monkey. And if the heart copy does touch the monkey then we want to change the lives by positive one, meaning that the life of this monkey just got boosted by plus one. And finally, if the hard copy does touch the monkey, then we can also go ahead and just delete that clone. There you have it. The last piece of advice I have for you is how to make everything in the game stop moving once someone either wins or loses the game. Go ahead and make your way back to the monkey code. In these two sections of code that are switching the backdrops, make your way to control and find this stop all block. Right. If someone has won the game, then we want to stop everything. Or if someone has lost the game, we want to stop everything. So now let's go ahead and test out our game and you'll see that if someone either wins or loses the game, then all the sprites will stop moving. And similarly, we should be able to test now that we have a heart sprite making copies of itself. The copies are falling from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. And if they ever touch the monkey, then the monkey is gaining a life. Notice that I already lost the life, so I'm trying to grab a heart. And there you have it. When the monkey hit the heart sprite, it regained a life. You are more than welcome to add in more sprites of your own that have their own purpose for this game. And I'm looking forward to seeing your creativity. Alright, have a great day everyone.